graduates of Harvard and MIT. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology. We are the premier engineering and science institution in the world. Do you think you could light a bulb with a battery and wire? Do you think you could light a bulb with a battery and wire? Yeah. Light a bulb with a battery and a wire. Maybe. Yes. Definitely. Do you think you can light a bulb with a battery and a wire? Battery and wire? Well, yes, why not? Okay. Definitely. Okay. Can you do that? The interesting part about the batteries and bulbs question is that people always predict that they can do it. Students say, of course I can do this. Uh, any hints I should have here? Teachers say, of course my students can do this. Oh! Do you know why that didn't work? I have no idea. Battery could be dead, the bulb could be bad, I'm hooking it up totally <laughs> incorrectly. I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm a mechanical engineer. But if I had to guess, I would say it's operator error. <laughs> okay. I know it's possible, but I don't know how to do it. It's only after failing that you begin to get upset with the question and think, well, maybe it's a trick question, maybe this has something to do with manipulating the wires, they couldn't hold all the wires together. You don't have a current if you only have one wire, you need a complete a closed circuit. But that's not the case. Oh, well, if I do it with a little light bulb, I just do this. <laughs> In which case, the, the light just lights up. It goes to the fundamental understanding of electricity. If one cannot light a light bulb with a battery and wire, then everything built upon those basic ideas has problems. The United States imports oil from Saudi Arabia, cars from Japan, TVs from Korea, and whiskey from Scotland. So what do we import from India? We import people, really smart people. And as you're about to see, the smartest, most successful, most influential Indians who've migrated to the U.S. seem to share a common credential. They're graduates of the Indian Institute of Technology, better known as IIT. Made up of seven campuses throughout India, IIT may be the most important university you've never heard of. Wouldn't mistake this for MIT or Caltech. It's the final exam of metal fabrication class required for every IIT freshman. Call it shop class on steroids. Using just a saw and a file, students have to cut quarter-inch steel into an assigned shape, measured to the millimeter. It's an illustration of IIT's emphasis on engineering basics, precision, and discipline. Would you say that IIT graduates are India's most valuable export? Yes, undoubtedly. N. Ram, one of India's leading journalists, says that because the stakes are so high, a kid starts preparing early. Seven, eight, ten. By the ten you know whether you're made, you're made for it or not. This is the truth or not? And at least half of these ten-year-olds told us they think they're made for it. But just standing out in school won't be enough. Two valences to the other. At about 16, they enroll in a prep class where they're drilled for the IIT entrance exam. There are even pre-dawn tutoring classes. 4.30 to about 8, they, they, they are gr they're grilled and then they go to school. Regular school? Regular school. 4.30 to 8 a.m.? Yes. Are you saying they do that every day? Yes, every day for that period. Two Particularly years. two years. Classes 11 and 12. I finished IIT Delhi and went to Carnegie Mellon for my master's. I thought I was cruising all the, all the way through Carnegie Mellon because it was so easy relative to the education I had gotten at IIT Delhi. If you... Nobody majors in music at IIT. The education is not well-rounded. But in science and technology, IIT undergraduates leave their American counterparts in the dust. We've always assumed that if teachers teach, students will learn. 
you can't assume that what's blatantly obvious to you and has always been blatantly obvious to you is going to be that way to somebody else, especially a kid. Uh, and uh, that's where you have to stop, regroup, and, and say, wait a second, is this really, is this really as self-evident as you'd like to think it is? Sometimes the simplest problems in science defy intuition, and the most basic technology is surprisingly difficult to grasp. Is it because we weren't taught? Or is it because of something deeper? Something about the way we think.